My mother-in-law had passed away. When I looked at her laying outside of her coffin and saw some of her precious things next to her, a photo caught my eye. It was a photo of the two of us. With tears running down my eyes, I picked up the photo. The way the lighting was shining, I saw there was something written on the back of the photo. Huh, what is this? I turned the photo over and was stunned. My name is Mia. I'm a 32-year-old businesswoman. I married my husband, Henry, three years ago. We met at a matchmaking party and began dating. After he asked me out, we got along really well and decided to get married after two years of dating. We quickly went to meet each other's parents to ask for their approval of marriage. When I went to Henry's parents, I was super nervous. Thanks for coming to the visit. It's lovely to meet you. My name is Mia. Nice to meet you too. I'm Henry's mom. The first person we met at the door was Henry's mother, and she greeted us with an incredibly kind smile. I felt relieved because she seemed like a very good person. I saw Henry's father seated with his legs crossed and a stern look on his face. I immediately became nervous again. I said, hello, and he replied with a curt voice, never changing his facial expression. He made it seem like I was stealing Henry away from him. Henry's mother chimed in with a laugh, telling me not to worry, that her husband is just like that because he's nervous. My mother-in-law asked me so many questions and shared many stories about Henry. I had a really fun time. Henry's father stayed quiet, but, but since Henry's mother was there, I stopped worrying. Henry was also super nervous. When he met my dad, my mom passed away from an illness when I was in high school, so I lived alone with my dad. When I graduated college and started working, I decided I'd feel bad to leave my dad alone and that he'd probably be lonely, so I lived with him until I'm getting married. Well, I was also worried that if I left my dad alone, he couldn't eat properly or take care of the house. My dad usually is very nice to everyone, but maybe he was nervous or maybe he wanted to be strict with the fiance of his only daughter, but he greeted Henry the same way my father-in-law had greeted me. Seeing my dad like that, Henry got even more nervous, and I remember finding it funny at the time. After meeting each other's parents, we got married and we began our newlywed lives. Henry and I rarely argued and we had a happy married life. We often went to visit his family. My mother-in-law always greeted me warmly with a smile. Mia, come in. Sorry for being a bother. Mom, we brought you some sweets. Oh, thank you, Henry. Let me try them now. Ah, oh, let me help you. Henry always helped out his mom when he went to go visit his parents. As their only son, he seemed grateful to his parents and wanted to do what he could to thank them for raising him. Henry's mother was always very happy. When he helped her, she would smile widely. We would eat sweets together, chat happily, and then enjoy dinner together. This is so delicious. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear you say that. My husband never says anything about my cooking, so sometimes I get worried whether it actually tastes good. If it tastes bad, I'll tell you. So I should assume that if you don't say anything, then it means it tastes good? Maybe my father-in-law got embarrassed, but he stopped talking and continued to eat in silence. My mother-in-law looked at him with a smile. What is it? You keep looking at me. So annoying. My mother-in-law laughed again. I could feel that the two of them really loved each other. My mother-in-law always took care of me. We only have Henry, right? Of course, he's a good son and all, but I personally wanted a daughter. So I see you as my own daughter. Hearing you say that makes me really happy. She and I would go out together, either to cafes or to go shopping. Mia, look, these would look so good on you. My mother-in-law used to work as a fashion coordinator, so her fashion sense is really great. I liked clothes, but I never really knew what suited me. So when I go out and go shopping with my mother-in-law, she would help me choose. Thanks to that, I would end up buying things I really like. When I'd wear what my mother-in-law chose for me at work, people would always compliment me. Going out shopping with my daughter and seeing her wear the clothes I picked for her, it's like a dream. I'm so glad you became part of our family. I'm also really happy to have you as my mother-in-law. I'm so happy. Does Henry cause you any problems? Not really, he works hard. That's good to hear. If anything ever happens, you can talk to me about it, even if I am his mom. 
I will give you my unbiased opinion. Thank you. Since my mom had passed away, my mother-in-law acted like my real mother. I began to think of her as my second mom, rather than my mother-in-law. Three years passed since Henry and I got married, and I began to think, I'd like to give my mother-in-law a grandchild. But at that time, Henry suddenly got a call from his father. Dad, what happened? Huh? Is mom? Seeing how Henry had frozen, I had a horrible feeling. Henry, what happened? Mom passed away. What? It was just too sudden. My mother-in-law had collapsed, and by the time they took her to the hospital, she'd already passed away. Both Henry and I were in complete shock. In a panic, we headed to the hospital and met my father-in-law. He was distraught. Why did this happen? How can I live on my own? Dad. He was on the verge of tears. My father-in-law usually hid his emotions, but he really loved his wife. Henry and I tried to console him and began preparing my mother-in-law's funeral. After she treated me as her own daughter, I wanted to send her off properly. She was technically just an in-law to me, but I wanted to thank her for all the love she had shown me. I wished I could have introduced her to grandchildren and wished I could have spent more time with her. Before the funeral began, I wanted to take one last look at my mother-in-law's face, so I looked in her coffin. She had the same kind of look on her face as she did whenever I'd visit her. She looked like she was asleep and that she'd wake up as soon as I called her name. When I looked at her laying inside of her coffin, I saw some of her precious things next to her. A photo caught my eye. It was a photo of the two of us. This photo was one that we took when we went shopping together. We were at a clothing store where a friend of hers works. The two of us posed in the clothes we had bought, and her friend took the photo of us. We had taken that photo on my mother-in-law's phone, but she had printed it out and kept it with her. Realizing how much she cared about me made me very happy. With tears running down my eyes, I picked up the photo. The way the light was shining on it, I saw there was something written on the back of the photo. Huh? What is this? I turned the photo over and was stunned. On the back of the photo was the date my mother-in-law had passed away, and the words, done. At that moment, I had thought to myself that this was something serious, feeling that something bad had happened. I slipped the photo into my pocket and closed the lid of the coffin. What could that mean? Done? Did it mean getting rid of my mother-in-law? Something else scared me. I've seen the handwriting before. After the funeral, Henry and his father and I returned home. The three of us sorted between my mother-in-law's belongings. She was gone. We barely said a word. My father-in-law was silent as usual, but his eyes were full of tears and he looked very lonely. Mia, Henry, thank you. My father-in-law thanked us, which was unusual for him. She had so many things, so it would have been tough for me to go through them on my own. Though he never said it out loud, my father-in-law must have really loved his wife. Don't worry, Dad. You can ask us for help any time. My husband said that to his father with a kind smile. He was acting as kindly and reliably as he usually did. But I was full of fear. The handwriting on the back of the photo of my mother-in-law and I was clearly Henry's. I watched over Henry without letting him notice. He was looking around my mother-in-law's room. My father-in-law was going through his wife's things, but he noticed Henry seemed to be looking for something. What is it, Henry? What are you looking for? Huh? I, I no. Henry looked shaken. I became curious about mom's things. I thought if something caught my eye, I could take it as a memento of her. Ah, she really likes small things, like accessories, and about a lot of them. If there's anything you like, you can take it. Henry seemed relieved. When his father said that to him, he became very serious and continued to look through his mother's things. I wondered what I should do. I thought my husband was suspicious, but I didn't have any proof that he had done something. I couldn't report him to the police just based on suspicions. And more than anything, I didn't want to think that way about the husband I loved, who had always treated his mother so kindly. I could be a criminal. But I couldn't shake away my suspicions, and everything he did, it scared me. I 
couldn't relax while I was home. Around that time, I suddenly got a call from my dad. Dad, what is it? Mia, I'm sorry for a call all of a sudden. I think I hurt my lower back. Oh, are you okay? It seems a bit serious, so can you come and help me around the house? Huh? Is it that bad? Can't you please come over? Sh sure. I explained what had happened to my husband and we decided to go over to my dad's house. Henry agreed that I should go take care of my dad. I felt bad thinking this way, but I thought to myself that my dad got hurt at the perfect time. Thanks to this, I could spend some time away from my husband. I packed a few days worth of clothes and headed to my dad's. When I made it, the door was unlocked. Dad, I'm here, are you okay? I yelled from the front door. My dad walked towards me perfectly fine. Mia, are you okay? Huh, what do you mean? Dad, didn't you injure yourself? Huh, a lie? I noticed that you were acting strangely at Henry's mother's funeral. Your expression changed right before the funeral began. So I knew something must have happened. Henry was acting strangely too, but he seemed to be different. Huh? Does this come to mind? Has he done anything suspicious lately? Hearing my dad say that, my knees caved in and I collapsed on the spot. My dad hugged me and walked me to the sofa. Thanks, Dad. It's okay, you must be exhausted mentally. If something's bothering you, why don't you tell me? I told him what I had seen written on the back of the photo. I see, it seems we should look into this. My dad quickly began making phone calls. Actually, my dad was a detective. He called someone who specializes in forsenic handwriting analysis. Mia, stay here for a while. I will do all that I can to look into this. Got it. I pretended to be as calm as possible. I told Henry that my dad's condition was bad and that I had to stay over with him for a while. Henry didn't seem to doubt me. My dad began investigating the death of my mother-in-law. Around that time, Henry suddenly visited my dad's house. Ah, Henry, what happened? Nothing in particular, I just wanted to check up on your father. Ah, oh, really? Um, well, he seems to be doing much better, but it'll take a while until he's completely healed. Really? Can I come in to say hello? Huh? Uh, no, he's actually sleeping now. Really? Henry smiled as he always does, but his eyes were cold. Hey, why do you still have the chain lock in place? Huh? Aren't we married? Why are you being so cautious? No, no, I'm not. Then open the door and let me in. No, no, th that is... Mia, do you know something? Have you said something weird to your father? Huh? What do you mean? For example, that I killed my mom. When he said that, Henry was no longer smiling. My heart beated so loudly. I was glad that I had the chain lock there. A weird rumor is going around and it's getting some troublesome. Your dad's a cop, right? If the police get suspicious and investigate me, it'll be a pain to deal with. Get suspicious? I already know that you have a ton of debt. Didn't you ask your mother to help you pay it off? You couldn't pay off your debt, so you killed her and tried taking her life insurance, right? If you really did that, you're the worst. Your mother cared so much about you, but you took her life in order to pay off your debt, you murderer. I couldn't take it anymore. I knew saying this would put me in danger, but I couldn't forgive Henry for hurting my precious mother-in-law. Henry began shaking intensely. So, you knew that much? In that case, I have to get rid of you too. My husband began trying to force open the door. Of course, since the chain was in place, he couldn't. But seeing his eyes filled me with fear. Those weren't the eyes of a normal person. Those were the eyes of a criminal who genuinely wanted to kill me. In panic, I ran away and hid somewhere in the house where I knew I'd be safe. Hey, don't run away from me. Your father isn't home, is he? I will kill you before he comes back. I quickly grabbed my phone and called my dad. Dad, save me. Henry is here. As I spoke to my dad, I heard a loud metallic noise and the sounds of footsteps walking over broken glass. My breath got caught in my throat. If I make any noise, I'll find out where I am. Hey, Mia, where are you? Answer me. After hearing his voice, I heard loud bangs. It seemed he was holding a weapon of sort and was banging it on the walls and doors. I kept my mouth closed and made sure I didn't make a sound, but he quickly found me. 
He tried turning the doorknob. I see. You're hiding inside the toilet. Hey, Mia, unlock the door. Don't make me break it open. I stayed silent. But sudden, there was a loud bang on the toilet floor. The banging continued. I began trembling. Henry was trying to break open the door like he did to the front door. I told you to come out. The sound of my husband yelling overlapped the sound with the banging. I was shaking out of fear and praying that the door wouldn't break. The door began to creak. Oh no, at this rate the door will break in and my husband will come in. And at that moment I heard the sound of someone collapsing. Stop, stop, yeah! I heard my husband yell. I heard the voice of another man. I've restrained the criminal. The police had arrived. When the police told me I was safe, I stepped out of the toilet and they handcuffed Henry and took him away in a patrol car. Mia, Dad, I jumped and hugged my dad. Thank God you're safe. I'm so glad you're alive. Having caught Henry, the truth came out about the death of my mother-in-law. Following his interrogation, Henry admitted to the crimes and he was declared guilty. Henry had hid it from me, but he was addicted to gambling. He had a ton of debt, and his mother helped him pay it off. He went into debt again. He killed his mother to get life insurance money. He knew his mother always drank tea when she ate her sweets, so he purposefully brought her sweets every time he came over, and would secretly put an insecticide into her tea to poison her. After having consumed too much poison, my mother-in-law collapsed and passed away. Mia, I'm so sorry about my idiot son. I really don't know how I can ever apologize after you experienced something so horrifying. My mother-in-law looked down gloomily. Please lift your head. You're the one who's suffering the most here. Once he's in prison, your wife will finally have been avenged. I couldn't stop crying. My husband was never going to step out of prison again. But when I thought about my mother-in-law who lost her life or my father-in-law who lost the woman he loved, I couldn't hold back my sadness. I hope Henry reflects on what he's done and he spends the rest of his life in prison. I still occasionally visit my father-in-law and we look at photos of my mother-in-law and I together. She really was like a real mother to me. I will cherish the clothes she picked out for me forever. Even now, when I wear those clothes that my mother-in-law picked out for me, I remember her kind smile. Thank you for watching.